Today's episode of Film Riots brought to you by Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, now with single and multiplayer, in stores now, and the HP DV7T with Beats Audio, and the smart Intel Core i5 processor. Today on Film Riot, we're gonna show you how to do this. Shall we rock, and yet also roll? Hey buddy. Hey Ryan. What's up? Nothing much. We're showing the effect from last week's ad, so I'm not really sure why I'm here. Just wasting people's time, I guess. But hey, at least it's a sketch. Sort of. Yeah. But still. Yeah. You wanna come in? Yeah. Logo. Welcome to Film Riot, the show that takes the mystery out of the effects and techniques that go into some of your favorite Hollywood films. I'm your host, Ryan Conley. Now last week we were all like <laughs> And ever since then, you've been all like, Can you guys show us how you did the power scene from the Fable ad? And now I'm all like, Okay. And it's all cleared up. Now I hadn't planned on showing how we did this effect, but since so many of you requested it, I figured, hey, why not? So first, you have to shoot your footage. Duh, stupid. What? Is this your first time watching the show? Duh. I did two shots to composite together later. The first one was the clean plate, which I also had someone off screen fanning the pages on the fridge, because the more physical interaction you have in your effect shot, the better it's gonna look in the end. The second shot was Josh playing out the scene on the green screen. And now bring your footage into After Effects, kinda like your brother who moves into your house after you get married even though you don't want him to and it's impossible to get rid of him because he's a relative. Hey! Not you, not, not, not us, totally different. Now, although it looks like I used a particle system, I did not. These are all assets from Action Essentials 2 and DetonationFilms.com. And here's how it all breaks down. First, place in the clean plate and then drop in the footage of your actor and key out the green. Next, I started on his eyes. And at first, I started using a method that I showed you from the zombie episode. But I wasn't too happy with the result, so I tried putting a flare from Optical Flares right over his eyes, and it worked perfectly. So first, I created a solid and added the lens flare to that solid. Then I created a light for the lens flare to follow. Then I tracked his eye and applied that tracking data to a null layer, then parented the light to the null layer. Then repeat that same dealio for the other eye. Next, I moved on to the hand. And for that, I used a flame asset from Action Essentials. I put the asset over his hand, then duplicated it two times, putting two of them above the layer of Josh and one below. That way it gives the effect that the flame completely surrounds his hand. Now, if you're curious to see how to track an After Effects, we've already covered that in a previous episode, so go check that out here. Watch it! Next, I moved to adding the effects that are around him, first of which are the sparks, which I also got from Action Essentials. I took the clip, flipped it, sized it up to fit, and then duplicated it twice. I took one of the spark layers, put it behind Josh, and sized it down as much as I could while still filling the frame. Then I put the other two in front of Josh, increased the size of one, then even more for the last. This will help give you the feeling of depth and make it look a lot less like 2D effects in a 3D environment. Now with the sparks done, I grabbed the smoke asset and put that behind Josh as well. Then I tinted it blue and dropped the opacity a lot. I didn't want it to be super noticeable, I just wanted it to add to the overall atmosphere. And with all that done, I take a coffee break. Thank you. What are you doing? Hey, can you remember the name of the song that goes like... And every time I hear him hang And I love to forever for tonight Again and time remains, tomorrow. No. Me neither. Have you seen Josh? I haven't. Why? Because I loaned him a copy of Assassin's Creed Brother to try it out for a few hours. So? So, I've been trying to get it back for the past two days. Oh. You know how Josh can get. I do. Stark, have you seen Josh? Stark! Have you seen him at all today? He's not talking. That's not a bad idea. No, that's pretty good. Call him on his cell phone. He always has it on him. Mm. 
Nothing? Straight to voicemail. Multiplayer? Assassin's Creed Brotherhood is available now. Logo. So now we have the eyes, hands, smoke, and sparks done. So now we move on to the final steps, which are the little things that will push our effect over the edge. First is the distortion of the background behind the flame. For this, I duplicated my clean plate footage and then added the ripple effect. Then just mask out the area that the heat should affect and feather it. You may also need to keyframe your mask shape as I did to follow the flame perfectly. Next is lighting. To help sell the effect that the glowing eyes in the flame is actually there, you're gonna wanna add brightness to the areas that light would actually be affecting. So duplicate your footage, then lighten it, tint it orange, feather the crap out of it, then mask around the areas it should be affecting, and again, keyframe your mask shape to follow those areas throughout the shot. I also added a cyan solid right above the background layer so it would only affect that, then set the blending mode to overlay and keyframe the opacity to flicker as the moment played out. And then it was time for the final power effect. I used two assets. First was just a flame, and the other is smoke that shoots towards the camera. So first I took the flame, flipped it upside down, added a vector blur, then keyframed the flame to move down through the frame. Double frame flame! So then at the point that the flame touches the bottom of the screen, I cued in the smoke asset, then I tinted both the flame and smoke asset orange, made sure motion blur was on for every layer, and... <laughs> All day, every day. Your mother. It's your mother too. True. You're an idiot. Pump, 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 get it, get it, shake, 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 shake it a little, son. That's the way. Yeah, that's the way. You go, girl. HP Pavilion DV7T, powered by the smart Intel Core i5 processor, delivers a great combination of fast, smart performance, productivity, and entertainment. It comes with Beats Audio for outstanding digital music playback and is equipped with a 17.3 inch diagonal HD screen. It's like the most beautiful woman you've ever seen, but in computer form. But it's super high tech, so maybe you could make your own woman like in weird science. But probably not. But with a built-in subwoofer optimized for unbelievably great studio quality sound, Intel Core processor family for faster, smarter performance, brilliant HP display, True Vision webcam for crystal clear chat, and a brushed aluminum case, who needs anything else? So that is that. The end is the end, and love is love. But until we revel in each other's musk next week, you can come digitally greet me on Twitter at twitter.com forward slash Ryan underscore Conley. You can also follow us on our face, my books, and I'll see you next Thursday when we unveil something that will change from right forever. And no, it's not the Beatles. And no, I'm not actually unveiling something that will change from right forever. I was gonna so, sing, but then I saw, I saw you saying. Yeah. Yeah.
was saying that. I, I, I was gonna. I thought I was gonna sing, but I, I thought, thought you stopped last time, so I was gonna sing this. That's exactly what I thought. Okay. Let's, okay. Okay. Now. Okay. 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 See, I thought you were gonna start singing. <laughs> I thought you were gonna. Yeah. Okay. This is very unorganized. Okay. All right. <laughs> 